All right. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Shirok from GDG Kuwait. Um, today we have a really lovely host in a cool workshop. I uh, would like to introduce you, Namal <laughs> Nawal. Um, she's a woman tech maker ambassador and uh, a co organizer at GDG Jedda. Um, she will be giving today a workshop on Flutter titled More Than Just Widget. Um, we're starting a series for the IWD uh, event during this month and probably, inshallah, for April as well. All of the events or activities are always free um, and they're always um, uh, very diverse in their content and also the audience as well as the speakers that are um, giving these workshops. Uh, you're always welcome to join us and uh, learn <laughs> from the knowledge that we offer. So I will leave the stage for Nawal, so you can uh, take the lead. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ru. Uh, thank you, GTG and WTM uh, Kuwait for hosting this awesome uh, session. I'm so pleased to be part of the IWD. Okay. So. Uh, I'll be talking today about more than just widgets. Um, so I have a quick question. Uh, have you heard about Flutter? Have you dealt with Flutter? Let me see. Yes, no, maybe what is Flutter? What are you talking about? Let me see. Okay, we have, awesome. Yay, awesome, cool. So we have, uh, Awesome. Okay, so most of our audience they have heard about Flutter and probably um, they have dealt with it. Okay, so uh, so who's your speaker for tonight? Uh, it's uh, yep, as Ru had said, I'm Noel Hamwi. I'm a Flutterista and um, a Flutter developer, woman tech maker, ambassador, and uh, and a, double, a woman tech maker Jada lead, and I'm a co organizer in GDG Jada and. Um, Saudi. So, yes, so for who is this talk? Basically, it's for the Flutter enthusiasts, Flutter developers like you. And um, I'm not going to say it's for the like uh, people who dealt with mobile applications since Flutter now, uh, not now, Flutter, um, uh, like, of course, you can deploy your code literally everywhere. So. Basically, it's for everyone. No, not now. <laughs> okay. So, uh, why why to care? Why to attend? Um, after this talk, uh, you will learn in theory uh, how and um, how can you uh, create uh, performant applications, and you will get to know the anatomy of uh, the Flutter applications and. Uh, you will understand how um, we can reuse objects in um, in our application, and um, you will understand how like to debug uh, your code. So uh, when I started first, uh, I don't know when, uh, perhaps late 2018, um, long time ago, uh, I thought that everything in Flutter was a widget. And uh, probably most of you or all of you had heard that everything in Flutter is a widget. It's true. However, as we can see, this is only the tip of the iceberg, which is the widget, which are the components that we see on our screens. Uh, according to the Flutter documentation, uh, widgets are the immutable description of a user interface. Um, they are descriptive views. Technically speaking, they are Dart classes that represent uh, your UI onto your screen. Now, according to the Oxford uh, Dictionary, the word immutable means uh, something that cannot be changed or will never change. So one question that you might be thinking of is that um, we understood that the UI changes, but the widgets don't. How does that happen? Well, uh, Flutter manages this concept using uh, trees. So what actually is there in our application is the rest of the iceberg. 
Okay, now if we dig deeper in our um, applications and clutter, uh, basically this is a, a snapshot, perhaps I can say, uh, from the documentation from my IDE. Um, so basically this is, as I said, this is the, um, uh, the definition, definition of widget, which is the immutable uh, description of a user interface. So it's defined by the documentation um, that it is immutable. This is the annotation for immutable. Yes. Okay. So widgets are immutable Dart classes. Okay, you probably you may wonder you may be wondering why are we using the concept of trees? Like we have other um, concepts. Why specifically trees? Um, so uh, let me just state something over here on uh, why um, yeah Flutter is referring uh, to its data as trees. If you develop applications using Flutter, you will realize that there is a hierarchical data structure, meaning the data is organized in like conceptually, uh, it's organized in nodes and they're connected by branches. So you have a parent that uh, may have a child or children, and uh, we will see that uh, there, I have a picture over here. Yep, so as we can see, um, the structure resembles pr pretty much the structure of our application. So it, this is how our Flutter applications look like. And um, yeah, that's why we refer to our application, uh, Flutter application as a tree. Okay, let me just explain something over here, which is the um, the architecture of uh, Flutter SDK. Um, one second. Yep. So uh, we interact. Uh, of course, this is the uh, architecture layers in our framework. We interact most of the times, uh, if not always, uh, with the platform design specific widgets, which are the material uh, widgets which target, of course, the Android platform and the Cupertino widgets, which target the um, iOS platform. And uh, then we have, of course, the widgets layer, which as well, we interact with it. Then we have the rendering layer and the Dart UI library, where like the developers won't edit much, but will definitely, of course, um, technically speaking, they will be dealing with it. Um, so we paint our pixels uh, or the widgets that we see on our screens uh, using uh, an API called the Canvas API from the Dart UI library. And of course, our engine uh, for Flutter is made up um, using, sorry, is made up using uh, C++. Oh, by the way, if you have any questions, yeah, feel free to uh, uh, write them down. Uh, after I finish, definitely I'll uh, get to your questions. Okay, so as I, ha uh, as I had said earlier that the UI is mutable and the widgets are immutable pieces of data, okay? Flutter manages, Flutter manages this difference uh, in concept using uh, trees, okay? So we have three different trees in our uh, application. And of course, we all deal with the uh, widget tree. And uh, this concept of having three trees, three trees in our application manages the state of the mutable UI, okay, inside of the immutable widget. And of course, as I said, uh, we have the widget tree, the element tree, and render object uh, tree. So back to the uh, first um, slide that I've, I've sh shared earlier, which is the tip of the iceberg, which is the widget tree. Um, note that when you build, uh, you build up your UI's application, you're doing it in a declarative sense, meaning the sequence, um, uh, like it's crucial. You're telling the Flutter uh, framework to put, um, for example, uh, an app bar widget, then uh, a text widget. So the expected UI will be in the same order as it's written. So you, basically you're configuring your uh, UI with widgets. And the role of the uh, widget is to explain to the framework how the elements 
okay, uh, will be arranged, the elements from the element tree. And I will explain everything. Okay, so again, the widgets are the abstracted logic that we see on our screen, whether it was um, layout, styling, animations, those are the those are only, as I said, those are only the tip of the iceberg. They're the abstracted logic. You create a widget by composing other widgets. And the, the widget tree is composed of nothing but several uh, several other composed widgets, of course. Um, and the widget tree is an actual tree uh, data structure in your code, and you can uh, think of it as your structure of your Flutter application. In this tree, which is the uh, widget tree, we actually have nodes where each node is a widget by itself. And those nodes or widgets in our context are connected by their, uh, to their parent in a relationship called parent-child relationship. We can think of uh, our widgets as classes where they are blueprints for something bigger than themselves. Okay. So we have um, the elements. Of course, you have you've heard heard me saying before uh, um, the word element. So what is an element? An element acts like the manufacturer of a widget. What does that mean? Since Flutter is a declarative framework, the element uh, the element here uh, declares or instantiates uh, the widget in a certain location in the uh, element tree. So the element tree manages updating those immutable widgets. In that sense, we can, we can consider um, the element as mutable components. And uh, the element tree makes sure that the UI is changing and responding uh, to these changes by being updated on your screens. So the element tree is responsible, by, uh, is responsible for the life cycle of the widget. It updates the... Uh, the uh, state of the widget. Elements, uh, element trees, uh, they make sure that when anything updates in your UI, things are well structured and organized. Moreover, the structure of your application is defined uh, by the fact that for each widget, there is an element for it in the in the element tree. So or originally, elements are actually widgets that have been made real on your um, on the tree and for every element of a widget there is a render object uh, for it those render objects make up the um, render tree the render object tree and uh, for every element there is a reference of the widget configuration in that sense elements aren't recreated, but they're updated. Let's say, for example, I updated the widget in my material app widget. What happens in such a scenario? The element only updates the reference to that widget instead of being, instead of destroying it and creating it all over again. So the structure or um, uh, the skeleton of the tree itself is the same, but it's edited. Now to sum this up, only the widget gets re rebuilt. However, the element updates only the widget's reference. In this way, Flutter is considered to be uh, to, like to be having performant applications. What's constantly being recreated are just cheap components compared to the. Uh, of course, when I say cheap components, I'm referring to the widgets, uh, the blueprints. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah, what's being recreated are the cheap components, AKA uh, the widgets, compared to the element or even the render objects uh, trees. Because of course uh, the blue blueprints are cheaper than uh, the, the element tree and the uh, render, render object tree. So in a conclusion, the element tree acts as a share point or we can consider it or imagine it as a glue that makes sure that the widget and render, render tree are going hand in hand happily. And uh, yep, the last tree that we have is the render object tree. 
render object tree. So this is a special object, okay, um, which uh, which is called the render object. It exists in the render tree. This tree is resp responsible of um, layouting or um, putting what you have created in a layout structure, um, basically painting what you have declared on your screen, uh, onto your screens. The render object, by the way, it's responsible of giving constraints to the widgets that will be painted as well on uh, the screen. Now, the actual painting of, uh, on the screen takes place in this stage here in the render object tree. Uh, what happens in this tree is, in, is inter internally uh, handled by the, frame, uh, by the Flutter framework. And um, of course, if I want to refer back to, our, to the uh, architecture over here. Yep, I can refer. Okay. So what happens over here uh, in, in this layer, our, uh, our widgets are being painted. And as I said earlier, we are not or we rarely deal with this layer. Okay. Um, of course, we don't. Uh, as I said, we don't deal with the um, like we don't deal with the rendering phase uh, because, of course, as I said, Flutter does it in the render object tree. We have classes in a render tree that use uh, the render object, and each render object has a corresponding widget. In a nutshell, um, the render objects method are methods are responsible of uh, painting those bits and bytes uh, of pixels on your screen. And of course, as I mentioned, that in the render objects, they define the size, uh, the sizes of uh, their widgets. Note that the render objects do the actual painting of the pixels. That's why we, we consider this layer a very expensive and complex uh, layer. That's why we have three trees so that we can reuse those expensive uh, render objects um, in, the, uh, in the render object tree. Now we can we can conclude from this explanation that we have um, first the widget tree, then the element tree, then lastly the uh, render object tree. We cannot have the render object, then the widget, then the element. No, in this exact specific order, like the architecture. Um, because each tree is dependent uh, on the other. And another point that I, I'd like to leave over here is that um, we use render object tree to paint our immutable widgets that exist in the mutable tree, sorry, that exist in the element uh, mutable tree. What we're basically doing here is that we're getting the best of both world, uh, we're getting the best of both worlds. <laughs> How? We make sure that the widgets cannot change their relationships with other widgets. Otherwise, if this was possible and the widgets were mutable and not immutable, then the, um, uh, I've lost the slide. Yeah, um, otherwise uh, our UI will get, uh, will get messed up because um, because every widget will how can I explain this? Because if the widgets were mutable, the UI will get messed up because every parent widget has a branch to the node or its child widget. So that's why we have immutable um, widgets. So uh, the widgets need to get, um, so widgets are destroyed, then uh, they get rebuilt because they're cheap components. And the, the, the mutable elementary updates the ch these changes. So yeah, we make sure that we have uh, this fact, uh, so, sorry, that we have this fact, which is the widgets are immutable. They do not change, only the reference of it is getting change. And we make sure that the element tree are mutable to change, uh, to change the widgets state. 
And at the end of the day, we get the speed and safety of writing our UI via the immutable widget. Okay, you may be wondering or asking yourself, what if I don't have those trees? Like three trees sound, having three trees sound like uh, a lot of work for one application. Well, maybe you sound right, but if, um, if I don't have those trees, those three trees, which is the widget tree, the element tree, and the render object tree, then in that case, you literally need to calculate the, co the coordinates of every single pixel on your screen. Not only this, but you also need to update those pixels. How many, now let's count how many pixels do we have in a single uh, screen or frame? Exactly, that's hectic. <laughs> that's why we have a high level abstractive declarative approach to build our UI. We build our UI with the help of the immutable widgets. Okay, probably you may be wondering, Noel, this is a lot of information. Why is it that much important and crucial for us to know about the anatomy of trees? Why, like the goal of this um, talk is to, of course, like um, let you know the differences between these three trees. Not only not only this, um, it's a good practice as as software engineers to know what goes uh, behind the scenes to be to be able to fully understand how things actually work. And thus, when you like when you understand how things actually work, it can help you track uh, errors. To its root and uh, of course when you can track er errors to their root you can definitely solve your bug so in summary we have uh, three three trees the uh, the widget tree the element tree and the render object tree and the widget tree we uh, this is also known um, or the functionality of it is it configures so it configures your your ui in this stage in the widget tree you're writing widgets you're assigning properties to those widgets in this uh, tree the element tree it uh, it manages the life cycle of the widget it's the manufacturer or the management team for um, for your application, your whole application, it's responsible of the configured uh, configured UI, which are the widgets. And as as I said, it has uh, it has it's responsible of holding certain uh, positions of the. Uh, it's responsible of for of holding the widgets in certain specific positions in the tree, in the element tree, and it makes sure that each child or children knows its parents and of course like vice versa all of the updates and formation of the widgets occur in this um, type of tree the element tree so it manages the structure makes sure that uh, the widget tree and the render object tree holds um, hand in hand happily and it manages updating the widgets the render object tree it paint, or it's known, or the main functionality for the render object uh, tree is to paint. It's the painter. It's the Picasso of our application. So it paint each pixel on the screen. Uh, the UI here is in this tree or this phase is painted on the Canva on our screen. And in this stage, each parent, child, and or children depends of course knows its constraints um it's painting uh, rules composition and even the sizing of uh, these um, widgets now um so why again why do you have three trees 
in one single application. By building the UI like this, our end result will be applications that are very performant because the framework uh, itself won't keep on destroying and uh, of course destroying and rebuild the, the, the let me rephrase it again. So we have, uh, by building our UI in this strategy, three trees and one application, our end result will be applications that are performant because the framework, um, they won't keep destroying the uh, object. However, they will be reusing the uh, components. Oh. Demo time, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I had some like, issues and bugs that need more time to fix. So yeah, in conclusion, uh, we have the, uh, the, the element. Without the element, we cannot have our UI updated to our screens. And uh, yep, so the element makes sure that uh, both the widget tree and the, uh, and the render object tree are performing um, in the best best way possible to make sure that our application is um, functioning um, perfectly uh, with high performance speed and the UI is organized. So those are the resources and uh, thank you so much. And now I can take the questions. If you have any more questions, of course, you can reach me out on my Twitter account. And, uh, yep, this is my uh, website as well. So let me see. Okay. Cool. Uh, also, there's one question so far. Uh, uh -huh. uh, they're asking, are we able to create our own custom widgets to look or act in a special way, like unusual shape or such? Let me just read it one second. Are we able to? So the question is, are we able to create our own custom widgets to look or act in a in special way, like unusual shapes and such? Yep, you can. Um, in Flutter, you can create your very own custom widgets. Uh, Fatme is asking, how can we call a future instance inside a widget? Um, I didn't understand this question, Fatme. If you can rephrase it, of course, I can help you. Awesome. So, um, if anyone has if like there... any further questions or they want to elaborate on the previous question, you can go ahead and do that. Um, don't worry. We will uh, see what we can <laughs> do. Yep, of course. So, in case um, you want more resources on this topic, because this is a very, um, it's not for beginners, it's for intermediate. And if you're interested to know more about how things get rendered uh, in your um, Flutter applications, you have, now you have my Twitter account, uh, Twitter account and I can definitely um, help you with that. Uh, I heard Flutter just made web support on stable, how Flutter handles resizable resizable layouts on the web? That's a very interesting question. Um, I think your name is Mohamed the Nerd. Um, it's a very uh, cool question. And for that, I can tell you, please stay tuned for my talk that I will be doing with Rihanna. Uh, we will be talking about uh, responsive, um, uh, the responsivity of our applications and uh, the Flutter web which will be happening on March 27th. So yeah, stay tuned. Of course, you can find uh, the event on my Twitter account as well. Uh, but can you just like give us a quick like overview on the answer, the, uh, the question? Like, 
I'm also interested. I want to know, like, how well does slaughter handle besides the layout? So, like, for example, there are react. Yeah, sorry, continue. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, uh, in Flutter, we have specific widgets that handle the um, the uh, the the concept of responsivity of our layout. And of course, since now things are stable, we need like you know just to refer back and experiment again with uh, um, our mm. use cases. And uh, so how, how long has yeah. the um, what do you call it the new uh, um, Flutter for web been around for? Like, have there been any like um, what do you call it? Um, Big project or anything that have already been maintaining it? Myself? Or? Uh, not, not yourself, like in the community itself. So, because obviously you're involved in the community. Like, do you hear any feedback on that or anything like that? Now, of course, um, the, the, um, the Flutter Web was not stable. It recently um, got stable. Mm. So, Normally, um, it was advised not to go for the uh, the uh, unstable version mm. of web. Okay. Yeah. However, like you, like you can build the uh, simple um, websites, simple, very mm. simple. Yeah, but uh, we need to see. Um, we we need to see. We need to look into how things now are. With Flutter Web Stable, um, another question is: um, Is there any re reliable resources for the web uh, part of Flutter other than the doc and the name? It's Mahmoud. Okay, nice to meet you, Mahmoud. Okay, um, um, reliable resource. It's the doc. It's the um, the documentation. Those are the reliable resources. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I think he's also maybe asking and, like recommendations uh, on like maybe tutorials and things like that. Maybe like do you watch specific uh, I don't know developers who do tutorials on Flutter or something like that? Like as as I have said, um, uh, Flutter Web was um, was not unstable. So like. You can find tutorials um, that target uh, the stable versions of uh, Flutter, like um, the mobile, um, both Android and iOS. Of course, stay tuned, uh, Mahmoud or Mohamed, I'm so sorry, I'm bad in the names. Um, definitely, um, there will be um, tutorials on, like since now we have Flutter web stable, of course there will be um, tutorials on that. And if I found any um, cool tutorials, I will retweet, of course, on my Twitter account. Thank you, Nara. So no, it's fine. <laughs> Thank you so you're much. You're always very supportive, and it's really good to hear from you, Lee, uh, um, on this topic. Uh, I'm first for myself, I'm a React developer, so this is a very interesting um, overview on like such a, an intermediate topic like widgets. Um, it feels a lot different from um, from what I was uh, like expecting, and from React itself. So the the concept for widgets and um, uh, what do you call it in the trees that you use, this is very interesting. Cool. Do you have uh, the concept of trees in React? Um, if I think about it, well, technically React is built on top of the DOM. So the dom is basically a, a tree. <laughs> so, but I don't, I don't. Oh, cool. I'm, I'm not sure if this is the same um, concept or the same topic. Um, mm. So, uh, if we're talking about states, uh, so this is also something else. So we have like comp component life cycle. Um, as for UI widgets, we don't really have. I, I don't think we have something like that. Or maybe I, I might be confusing the, the, the topic. Um, let's see. Maybe we can try and figure out just some, <laughs> um, what do you call it, 
I'm not sure. Has anyone? We need. I don't know. Like I had this one yeah. crazy idea. We need to do a talk. Uh, Flutter versus uh, React. Versus, uh, yeah, I would love that. <laughs> No, of course, like of course, like at the end of the day, it really depends no. on your use case. I'm not gonna like tell everyone go. For no. <laughs> I guess it's where you're most comfortable. So like, it, like because in React, you don't have mm -hmm. to really um, learn a new language like Dart, um, and but you have to deal with JavaScript, which isn't really um, what do you call it, a fun language, as a lot of people say. <laughs> um, and uh, still, you get to use like the main concepts of using dev and CSS inside of your JavaScript and things like that. So it might feel a little bit more familiar for web developers. But I think again, like uh, as you said, Flutter originally was uh, being for mobile development, and I guess uh, like everyone has their perks uh, and like what they're interested in. So maybe, yeah, it would be cool to have like a quick uh, React versus uh, Dart and which would you uh, use for what, which project and if you have the skills for this or that. I think, yeah, I, I like that. Let's plan this for the future. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, awesome. By the way, Dart, like um, long, long, long ago, Dart was on a mission to replace. Oh Amazon. my. Well then, I feel threatened. <laughs> and and <laughs> no, like I mean, the the learning curve for Dart is is like it's it's an approachable uh, language and it's very familiar. Um, if if you're coming from um, a C a C style family. Oh yeah, yeah. Slash yeah. language. It, yeah. It's more. Uh, what's the word for it? More concrete. More reliable. Uh, because as a language, it's, um, what do you call it? Uh, I can't remember the word, but like, you know, how, like how JavaScript is very fluid and it's not very reliable. And like, and in the sense when you're, when you're uh, coding and when you're trying to, um, um, make sure that you, you don't make mistakes with your, uh, variable assignments or, um, uh, variable types and things like that. So, and, and also the concept of classes and, and, and functional programming and it, it makes it a little bit difficult for people to understand uh, how it's used. Um, so yeah, I guess maybe you're right. Um, maybe Dart is more easier. <laughs> and I think most of us start out by learning C++. So like, um, yeah. Well, <laughs> so that's I guess, I guess that's, that's an interesting way to look at it. Uh, there is actually, yeah, the the you would get to watch the recording on uh, the YouTube channel. Uh, and I'm not sure if Nawal would be sharing the link for her slides or not. <laughs> uh, we'll see about that. I, yeah. I didn't hear you. Uh, what you say? Someone Last is something? asking for uh, the slides in the chat. Oh, wow. Yeah, sure. OK. Um, I'll I'll tweet them out and uh, on my Twitter account and uh, yeah I I will give it to um, GDG Kuwait. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Noah. <laughs> um, I thank you so much. You're for always. Oh, there's one last question. I guess you can take that if you still have time. Uh, it's from Fasim. He's saying, is there any design pattern mostly used in Flutter like MVC, MVVM, MVP? Um, I think it's um... Um, yeah. So, like, I I think you don't have a model view controller concept in Flutter, or do you? We can tackle this question in a different talk. Hmm. It's it's I, I like the question. I think um, I wanna. I want to dig deeper into the design patterns used in Flutter. Thank you so much, Kasim. Thank you. I will like no, the question. <laughs> Definitely, I I will keep it in mind for future talks. Thank you so much, uh, Kasim. Do you think Flutter will evolve in Kuwait that will start hiring Flutter developers? I don't know. I mean, like I'm I, I live in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, so I don't know. I think Shuruk can 
<laughs> Maybe you can I'm answer not, from I'm the point of view how... developers in uh, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. I think that would be best thing. Because uh, for Kuwait, um, I think there is a lot of people right now going towards React, from what I've seen, and a lot of projects there. Mm -hmm. Um, and they also prefer, especially in the Middle East, from what I've seen, uh, mobile, like native mobile development, iOS and Android. So, yeah, people are a bit old fashioned in that space there. <laughs> um, but maybe you can give us an insight in Saudi Arabia or Jeddah more specifically. So the question will be oh, uh, to, to uh, add, it's in the answer. Oh. <laughs> what? Okay. What what's the question? He's saying How, like, uh, uh, will do you think Flutter will evolve in let's remove Kuwait and say Jeddah that, that will people like people will start hiring Flutter developers more? Like, yes, of course. After the updates, yes. Okay. Yes, and uh, there are Flutter developers in in Saudi Arabia, and there are startups that are very interested in uh, Flutter, and there are startups that have their products written in Flutter and mm -hmm. Firebase, and they're functioning perfectly. Okay, last question for tonight. How can uh, we keep I'll... up today, uh, keep up to date with the upcoming events? Um, you can follow me on Twitter. I, uh, I tweet most of the events. I, I think I'm, I'm assuming that you're asking about the um, uh, like Flutter events and not <laughs> GDG Kuwait event, yeah. events because that's... Uh, you can go ahead first and then I'll answer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah um, I, I tweet about all cool Flutter events and uh, I, I think I have some some bunch of talks this month and Oh yeah, can I just advertise about yeah, my yeah. event next yeah, week? Yeah, yeah, sure, go ahead. I think it's as long as it's cool. uh, free, so, I guess everyone should be... Uh, yes, 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 attend. yes. Once again, let me just... Um, yeah, find uh, while uh, Noelle finds the event link for her uh, <laughs> next sessions, I would just like to say, uh, I sent the first one, one thing. I sent a link. Uh, it's a um, a form where you can like fill your um, information and feedback, like the first thing I sent. So you receive a certificate for attending the session. And the second thing, if you follow the CDG Kuwait um, community um, page here, you will always receive uh, um, notifications on any events that we post. Also, if you follow us on GDG Kuwait, um, WTM GDG Kuwait uh, on Twitter, on uh, Instagram, you'll always hear about our information. So, moving to Noah. <laughs> okay, thank you, uh, Shadow. So, yeah, I've posted a link in the chat. So feel free to register. <laughs> and, um, yep, we will be having some cool um, content. See you there. Thank you so much, uh, GDG and WTM uh, Kuwait, for having me tonight. It was uh, it was a cool experience, and I'm looking forward for more um, talks at GDG and WTM Kuwait. Thank you, Noel. Thank Two you talks so, so much, far. Well, the, the the React uh, yeah, the React native uh, versus I would the love that. Flutter. I can't wait. <laughs> and. Uh, and the design patterns. And yeah, that would be really Thank great. You. We'll wait. We'll have to wait for that. Come on. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Noel, yes, so much for coming. And thank you, everyone, for coming. Oh, awesome. Uh, it's been thank a great you. night. I hope yeah. all of you have a good day and a good weekend. And see you in the next session, inshallah. Keep up with our website and um, our social media. And make sure to follow Noel for her uh, future sessions as well. Thank you all. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.